This is Matt back for an update on bus wiring. In the last video I was talking about soldering the feeders to the bottom of the rail and now it's time to actually put the bus on that the feeders will be attached to. First thing I discovered was that uh, some of the bench work down at the right end of Columbus Yard wasn't yet actually attached. It was just clamped together so they take care of that first. I uh, ran over with the level a few times to make sure it was good and straight. Uh, shot some screws in there and uh, it was able to move on. The yellow wire you see there by the right elbow, I'll be using that for the bus wiring later in this video. So once that's good, moved on to the bus wiring. This is on the Circleville side of the basement. Uh, this is going to be the red and black circuit, which is the circuit that powers all of Circleville. And uh, first thing I do is just uh, anchor it to one of the joists so I could uh, pull these and twist them. Uh, these are on spools you get like Home Depot or Lowe's. So I just put the two spools on a long Phillips head screwdriver and uh, twisted them as I went. That worked pretty well. Um, because they're on a fairly small diameter spool, they are kind of tightly wound, so they always re retained kind of a pigtail look, which didn't turn out to be too much of a problem. That left some slack and that came in handy later. Uh, so once I had the wire pulled, I marked where I wanted the uh, clamps to be. They're just metal uh, low voltage wire clamps to hold the wire in place. The only thing I'm concerned about this section is it's going to be under some, some uh, expanded foam scenery. Getting it away from that, unfortunately, in this case. Uh, once I was complete with this part, I moved to the other side of the basement to do the same thing. So here I'm starting more or less where the red and black circuit ended, and now I'm running the yellow and black circuit. All my circuits have a black wire in common. This is 14 gauge stranded wire. And then I uh, pair that with a colored wire so I can uh, hopefully have a logical system that will be easy to track later. So once I have those two, the black and the yellow stretched out, I go through a twisting process. Uh, this turned out to be more of a problem because the black was on that small diamond reel and the yellow wire was, was just kind of loosely rolled. So one was twisted, one wasn't, so I had to spend some time straightening out that black wire before I get it twisted properly. And then went through like a jump group routine to get the wire twisted. I was shooting for about uh, three turns per foot, so I just measured the distance so I'd know how many turns I needed to make. This worked out pretty well. Just twist a few times and stretch arms across to force the twist down towards the other end. Once the wire is fully pulled out, I went back and forth long to kind of chase the uh, chase the twists that are equally distributed along the length, and then proceeded to. Uh, mark the plywood for one and two drill holes for the cable support. So as I'm doing here, just measuring halfway between the uh, shelf brackets, drilling holes for the mounts, and then uh, screwing the mounts in. These are quarter inch coaxial wire mounts, uh, plastic nylon sort of things. Uh, I like these because they hold it loosely enough, that hold tightly enough to keep it out of the way, but loosely enough that I can move the cable back and forth in there if I need to. So I got some slack. The zigzag motion that's kind of, or the pattern that's kind of made also leads for a little bit of uh, slack. So if I need to go back later and detach things, uh, I'll have about uh, two inches of slack between each that I can use to adjust things if necessary. Here's a good look at what it looks like when it's done. Uh, next, move on to actually attaching the feeders. First step was to use an insulation displacement tool and moves the insulation out of the way so you can wrap the feeder wire around that for soldering. Um, the splice I was using was, I think it's called a Lyman splice or perhaps a Western Union splice. And uh, you just take the bare end of the wire and wrap it around the uh, bus wire two or three times. And it gives a pretty good joint just bare, but then adding solder to it uh, makes it a nice solid uh, solid joint. Once I was happy with the with the wrap, the splice, I uh, got the soldering iron out and made it a permanent attachment. The extra loop above the joint there leaves just enough slack that if I need to move the wire around at a later date for repair or whatever. It's going to be easy to move around without uh, snagging or pulling anything loose. Uh, once I was happy with where everything laid, I, I got the stapler out and did the wire management, attach it out, make sure it didn't get snagged later, and then moved on to uh, run some more bus wire. 
So now I'm back on the south side of the basement and I'm going to do the same uh, add feeders to Circleville. This is the same approach I used previously, but uh, I routed the wires a little differently as far as creating the slack. Here I created a, a loop that paralleled the, the support joist. I ended up making it a little shorter after this, but I was just experimenting at this point. Uh, so after it's wrapped to solder it, I'm using a, uh, a water-soluble solder, solder, my first time using this, and it's working out pretty well. So I do the splice there, reattach the wire anchor, um, move on down the road. So I had one of these attachments pretty much at each one of these upper joists you see, about every three feet on average. And wash, rinse, repeat. And then after I complete this section, I'll work on the lower staging level. The lower staging level is my green circuit. The uh, circle of circuits are green, or I'm sorry, red and black circuit. The only thing I really did differently down here was where the feeder loops were attached and, and the shape I put them in. Here I had some room. I was attaching it directly to the homosote spline, which is very handy. And I put the slack in by putting those two loops on there. And after that, it's just repeating the process till I get the end of this particular circuit, which is just around the curve at the top of the screen. After this point, I just have a few more places I need to run some buses and drop some feeders, and then I'll be ready to run trains at that point. Thanks for watching.